Here he is. Harry Harrison. I've only brought this on for show. I don't generally drink it. <laughs> I was talking to my old mate, Brian Cliff, the folk singer. You know, we come down to my pub, the park in at Woodset and Bottom of Sedgley Hill. And I don't know whether you have noticed in public houses, ladies and gentlemen, people always sit in the same place or they stand in the same place, don't they? I went to do a feature for the Midland Chronicle about, what, two years ago in the bush at Wood Lane, Bramwich. There's room for 300 to sit down. There were about 44 in. I saw down blokes as I'm in my place, he says. <laughs> eh? And they always stand in the same place in the pubs. And if you're trying to get through, mate, I hate you want A to Z or a bulldozer or something to shift on some on them. And it's a bitter experience putting it mild. When your beer gets spilled and your clothes get soiled. Because there ain't no gangway through the masses for a bloke to take his train glasses. It's game with a stun, no bother or war. I bet you've seen them all around the bar. Them like a chain gang, yeah, they stun with the pints and the halves stuck in on. Them there by the pools with them all right. Ten to one in the same spot, night after night. Laughing and gaming, cracking jokes. They ain't really a bad crowd of blokes. But they stun in fast, they won't budge. You can go and excuse me, give them a nudge. You are wasting your time, they will give way up and wait all night and perhaps next day. They might be our kid them there with the mates. Stuck by the bar in the stunning up sights. If the gaffer told them they could sit, I bet you'd half on them would throw a fit, or oh, they'd really pull a face. Somehow feel out of place. Away from the bar with its counter attraction, with the beers in rage, and there's more action. It'd be a test for George, your best to find a way through when they're pressed. And by the time you'll get there, if you'll come, you're perhaps too late, on the towel's on. So if the worst comes to the worst, beat them to it, get in first. And it's ten to one if you do, be out by the ball, with them in the queue. <laughs> queues are, it makes you wonder today with different queues and folks going around. Little shepherd going, there's old money in there, bloke goes in one day and mistook the shepherd of Back a shop, you know, he's going in for a double wood boy. Couldn't believe his eyes. Stacked out it was with balls of whitening. Everywhere you could look, balls of whitening. This bloke looked, you know, rung the bell, one of them old fashions on the counter, old months of this is what he had. He says, double wood boy, he said, thou sell fakes. Thou sell fakes. He says, well, have you got some... Uh, Snuff, he says, I like a pinch of snuff, he says, I don't sell snuff. He says, well, what you sell? He says, oh, he says, I only sell whitening. He says, I think you'll do. He says, I've never seen so much bloody whitening in a shop in my life, he says. He says, you must have a thousand balls of whitening here. He says, 2,798 balls of whitening. He says, and when he comes next week, I'll have 3,333 <laughs> balls of whitening. But well, the bloke says, you must sell some whitening. Oh, I never sell no whitening. Oh, yeah, I sold no whitening for two of you. But I tell you, mate, you want to see that bloke sell bloody whitening as he sells it to me, he said. <laughs> oh, uh, selling. When you go in the shops, have you read the shop assistants prayer? It's a plea to folks to trade them fair, to make the minds up what they want in. So they got time to do the canting and not to make a lot of fuss when they got nothing. In the puss. It's the Iraq kid, it's like a show. They go in him, in him, on him out. First they want it, then they do. And if it's closing time, they still don't know. Now run the shop folks around in rings and they want to see 10,000 things. Pop round the markets, ask them who'll save. A lot of folks have got a nerve. When they've handled all the stock, they come out with old poppycock. Oh, thanks a lot, I'll go and see. I might come back because he died for me. Now nobody wants a pig and a poke. But some of the shoppers, and passed a joke. If it's hats and shoes, they try the lot and ask them if it's all they got. Assistance, they must want assistance themselves when they know and strip the shelves. And after they've upset the shop, they'll stun and they watch the shop folks drop. And when they see the knees and bent, they take the rooks and they leave them spent. So when it's make your mind up time, just think about that little rhyme. On your wall drive, nobody down the twist going down your shopping list. But don't blame me and make a fuss if you've got nothing left in your push.
Now, I was talking to Mike Bailey, old friend of mine, he's on the Shopshire store now, but he used to work with me at West Midlands Press, and I do circulation work as well as public relations and, and editorial. Public relations work, they couldn't have a better blog doing public relations work. I've got more relations going in publics in the black country than anybody. <laughs> And news agents, <laughs> take pity, brother, if you can. Think about the paper, man. We hundreds of items stuck in the head. They race out of bed, feeling off jet. They're up at Valley, straight on the job. Pleasing the public to make a few bobs. Surrounded with gossip, banging the news. But who'd be in the paper, man, shoes? I've scrutinised him, and I must confess. He's express and wizard to keep out a mess. It's a laugh, a cry. Mid stress and strife, he's some titbits from his sport in life. Just take the blokes and go into work. They look as though they'll go be sick if perhaps there's been a paper strike, make all get just what they like. The women and all, they grunt and groan. If the weekly's gone or the woman's own, it's the truth, they're kid, no saf soap. They give him the headache, leak or cope, and some don't buy nothing. They take the rooks. After looking at papers or perhaps at books. And it's pandemonium in the shop. If the paper kid's missing, he's in a flap. When holidays come, his blood's on the boil. He's got stacks of papers in a pile. What bit of air he's got is going grey. They've gone away, and they day bother to say. The profit's gone from the profit's job, but he presses on to make a few bob. So spare a final thought, if you can, and take pity, brother, on the paper, man. <laughs> Bloke in a pub, you know, he's there drinking beer like this. And uh, chap comes in, see? Vicar. He says, have a drink with me. Bosh, right down. Another five minutes, have another drink with me, the vicar says. He says, I don't mind, it's all down again. Another five minutes. Have a drink with me, he said. He says, I don't mind at all, another pint. Another five minutes, the vicar went up. He says, get me another drink. He said, you can have another drink, he said. Barman, pint of bitter, please, and a pint of water. Got the pint of water, pint of bitter. And he says to the drunk, he says, now watch this. Took a little tin out of his pocket, took a worm out on it, zapped it in the waiter, bosh. Straight to the bottom, swimming round, doing the breaststroke, somersaulting and all sorts. Took him out the waiter, put him in the beer, bosh again, straight to the bottom, stopped there, stone jet. He looked at the drunk, he says, what does that prove, mate? He says, anybody who drinks bitter, I'll well, never have the worms. <laughs> true. Very, very true. And the windmill down the woods estate, Wensbury, a little kid went in there, the other week, seven year old. He says, give a pint of bitter. Misses the back of the bar, says, I call save you. He says, fetch somebody who's gone. <laughs> To truth, I'm like that, you know. But what a change it is today with, with all the old stuff disappearing, you know, when you think about the disappearing scene. And I wrote one on Bilston Market around about 1950. And if there's anybody in this room who's been on Bilston Market, they'll visualise the outside market. And I took it in the sequence as what it was then. Have you all stood round old market places? Sit the folks with the eager faces. Who crowding round and on a loft, but the market folk selling all sorts of. Old uns, young uns selling shirts, fat uns, thin uns flogging skates, baskets full of graded eggs and fancy stockings to suit all legs, yards of linen, net and curtain. Very cheap, that's for certain. Towels, socks, ties and shoes, latest records for blatting blues. Blethers to blow, soup to rate, pork pie, sausages, all sorts of mate, apples and oranges, tomatoes and grapes, <laughs> whitenings, wallpapers, paints and tapes. And a woman there shouted, get your powder, stack of the wenches, start to crowd her, for the stuff to make the faces pretty. Bin board special from the city, pots and ponds, buckets and dishes, and the bloke of stones, and simply wishes. The women would buy them instead of rushing to get a frock or a fancy cushion. Pencils, biros, drawing books, crayons, 
acorns, toothcombs, air dice for grains, rouse trees, flower seeds, stuff for your loans, toothpaste, polishes, plasters for cones, cups and saucers, plates and mugs, carpets, linos, doormats, rugs, taters, fish, cakes and honey, all you want, just the money, earrings, pendants, brooches, watches, someone good, someone catches, dog food, cat food, bird food and sun, overcoats and jackets, and boots second on. Why these great big super stewards you see? They've been the one, two, three for me, not for the atmosphere, in the old market places. We have to see them folks with the eager faces. And have you all noticed these folks as go abroad for their holidays now, eh? If especially if they go to Mallorca or Spain or the Costa Brava or somewhere, 12 months before they go, you have got it. And 12 months after they come back, louder ball. <laughs> hey, it, hey? It's the truth. And there's plane loads now flying off. Abroad for old, you've got a lot. Spain and Mallorca, I've heard them on, but I missed the one when they're gone. And when they try that foreign stuff, they go fly back quick enough. Your mind is nice to fly away, so when you're back, you can say, Oh, Tito's in Palmer, that's the place to just pop in and show your face. And you ought to see the caves of Jack. You'll hear them, mate, when they get back. What a night at the barbecue. Oh, that really was a Boston deal. Wine and music mixed together and the sweating folks in the red hot weather. We the Spanish blokes with the flashing eyes can give wench a nice surprise. Oh. <laughs> Change is very nice, our kid, to tell your mates what you've said. But I'll bet you how summer went. I'll think of kin for the lickies and clent. we the good old pubs have proper beer. Not stuff to make your belly queer. This country, mate, will take some licking. Some was in heaven just up picking. <laughs> and the day put labels on the cases to show off with them brand off faces. Your mind is nice to fly away, but it's better flying back, I'd say. I said earlier on, you know, some days nothing goes right, does it? Some days, somehow, nothing goes right. Break a day till late at night. You perhaps say slept and you feel half dead as you fo force yourself out of bed. You have bleary eye and you just go rush. And you find the tile just won't flush. The gas keeps going on and off. The kettle will boil, you try to laugh. But then you'll find you're out of tie and them next door have gone away. You fling your arms to just give up and nicely smosh a china cup. It's one of them days when you'll call win. You'll call wake out where you'll be. The breadman's left you in the court. The car's packed up. It just won't start. And the postman comes to make it wuss with three big bills to make you cuss. <laughs> the babby's blotting in his pram. His face all boated up with jam. The cats had kittens under the bed. You'll call describe them as they've made. And the kids on holiday are in and out. And all I do is bawl and shout. You've pegged your washing on the line. And you'll pray to heaven, it just stops fine. But then you'll hear a clap of thunder. It makes you feel like going under. But take no notice, you'll be okay. You'll live to fight another day. <laughs> no, we, we had to live to fight other days, you know. It's, every day is a bit of a fight, really, you know. You'll never know what you're... Going to meet when you're going to places or where... Uh, have you noticed folks at weddings? I was talking to Morris Jones and John Raven about this. When people go to weddings, they're a different set of folks to what they've been when they're at work. They go into the wedding of the Saturday and they sit there after they've gone in through the doors and they've had the sherry and Aunt Lil looks along the road and they've sat there nicely and they say, well, I don't bloody know he was marrying to your family. Of course, you know, uh, I mean, you know, as they were married when, uh, you know that, don't you? <laughs> right? And you know who Erskine to. I mean, her husband, you know, her, you know who her husband was, don't you? Entertainment secretary at the club, don't you? 25 yards of that pattern carpet missing. Have you seen their dining room since it's been done? <laughs> 
that it's too late to have people quickly change, you know. And if you analyse folks, how they change the old time. It's marvellous, really, with kids at school as well, how when you grow up, you've got these memories. And how your memories will change about, about your, your school days. And you start to think of all sorts of things that have come over the years, you know. I remember some of the kids when I was at school and, and watching them, and I thought, I wonder what they'll be when they grow up. And uh, we're hopefully going to America in some, some time in the future. Actually, I went to America four years ago, and I was in Texas. And I was sat there in this pub, you know, having a game cards, and there was two or three cowboys in there. And uh, the one was dressed all in black big stets and on low slung guns, you know. Fill you full of confidence, you have met the sword, you know. And he must have thought I was chiding. He says, go for your gun. So I come back to tip and for it. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick and far we go, I'll just tell you this. Now, you've all had a drink or two, and we've all enjoyed your company. It's been lovely to meet you. But have you ever heard that I you know, was a knocker-up? <laughs> now, sometimes he knocked at knockets, and sometimes he used to knock at knackets. And if you're going to join in the chorus, go steady past your grannies. Now join with me in this just to finish it off in a nice friendly vein. Now, I knock knocks on Mrs. Knackett's knocker. <laughs> on Mrs. Knackett's knocker, I knock knocks. Every morning just at four, I knock knocks the knocker on Mrs. Knackett's door. He used to knock at knockets, but now he knocks at knackets. At knocking knockers. I knocks got the knack, got the knack, go. Oh, I knock knocks on Mrs. Knackett's knocker. <laughs> on Mrs. Knackett's knocker, I knock knocks, thank you. lately for any reason. I eat a game at the doctor. You've got to make an appointment to the doctors now. I phoned my doctor up Wednesday last week. I went to the flu March to the 7th to the 14th next year. <laughs> and he's booked up. <laughs> you call get in. And I chatted to him the other day up Sedley Conservative Club. He said, well, I've got to look after the regulars. It ain't fair, is it? <laughs> huh? Well, I got one of the days that worked at the Bean Tipton last year, a British Leyland, a broke after casting on his foot. Terrible state. He went down the doctors there. Oh, you ought to see it. He said, what's the with this? He says, limp. <laughs> Very true. You yeah, never see a place like Tipton in your life. There's a bloke been on the labour there, 24 here and nine months. I've just found him a job. He wants somebody to run us money. <laughs> And it's, it's the Tipton now. Wonderful place. Wonderful place. It is. It's a great place, Tipton is. Now, at the Prince of Wales, a bloke walked in the other week naked as a robin. He hadn't got a stitch on. Says to the missus, the back of the county, she says, gives a pint of mix. They looked him up and down, more down than up and running the back. Says to her husband, bloke naked in the board, he says, he's dreaming. He says, never mind dreaming. You're going to have a look, he bowed in, big bloke. He looking boggle eyed at this customer in his birthday suit. Chap says, Come on out, pal. Let's have some service, he says. Pint of mixed. I got enough with the domino players. Dart players looking at me. Gaffer looked at him. He couldn't believe it. He looked him up and down, pinched his cell. He says, Close, old pal, close. He says, These are my working clothes, mate. He says, You've got nothing on. He says, Well, I had done nothing for about 20 years. <laughs> I don't care for nothing. And I got a son of schoolmaster, deputy headmaster of a school. And when he was doing his teaching practice in Tip, the kid shot his hand up. He says, hey, I got a pencil. Philip says, what did you say? He says, hey, I got a pencil. He says, what did you say? He says, hey, I got a pencil. Philip says, I haven't got a pencil. I haven't got a pencil. Kids, well, who's got all the bloody pencils? <laughs> Dudley, this, 
This old couple of Dudley, what John Raven's been on about, they got a daughter married Australian, 21 years ago, week last Monday. When they're living in Sydney, they've got three grandchildren, this old man and this old woman, never see them. And suddenly they won £75,000 on Little Woods and they fled away to Sydney. And they'd never been past Wolverhampton. The old man in his braces and the old missus there with him in the morning going along Bondi Beach. Walking there, you know. He says, look at that owl, Lizzie, he says. Looking out to sea, the little boat, you know, got some rope on, a bloke stood on a board hanging on, going round the bay. Great big bronze lifeguard come by, he says, what's he doing our kid? Oh, he says, he's safe riding. Just as he said, that a bloody big shark, come and pulled him off. He says, he ain't a bloody safe as he thought he was. <laughs> Are not we safe today, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, not we safe, it's right, that we Oh, how good to you. You've got to have some laughs on your travels. Back at West Bromwich, when I was working on that West Brom news, or a John Chronicle, we used to go in the Sandwell Hotel on, on a Friday, the editors of the papers, and we'd sit down and have a nice little meal or something, a drink, discuss the week or whatever. And they got a waiter there, and he become very officious. Very, very officious he was. Got a bit about him, you know. Started to wear a tie at the finish. Oh, no. <laughs> red Indian come one day, sat down at the table. This bloke went across to him. He says, have you got a reservation? He says, no, I'll in a flat of Beaches Road. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> I'm quick, are they, and all. Oh, they're very, very quick to especially around our road. They've only got his slabs and wet, and now it's been raining. <laughs> Have you noticed some days nothing never goes right for you? Eh? Some days, somehow, nothing goes right, does it? It don't matter what you do, you know, you can pick the phone up, or things will go all wrong, you know. It was the same with Ainuk and Tippen when he worked at the Waterworks. And Tippen. Every week it was late, three mornings. When the gaffer called him one morning, he says, listen, if you're late three times next week, he says, you have got the sack. He went nap, he was late every morning the next week. He'd give him the sack of the Friday, he'd come back in the yard Monday morning, he says, hey, come here, Blossom. He said, I'll give you all the sack Friday. He said, no, you did, I'll forgive you over the weekend. <laughs> what a difference with old pubs and the new ones, eh? When you go in these new pubs now, I'm just having a nice conversation, a lovely point, congenial people, somebody comes in, bosh, put somebody in the jukebox, you've had it. When the old pubs go, it is a shame. Because the new ones, they'll never be the same. Though the lights are dim, it's pretty clear. The old atmosphere, our kid, are there. A work in Mons Parliament pubs used to be, but them days... Them going, if you ask me, today they're mostly commercialised. That's one thing what they are disguised. What chance have you got to get folks talking? With them jukeboxes, all this squawking. When they turned up, it makes you wonder if they've upset the god of thunder. How can you speak when you go think? Them things drive them on to drink. They draw their ear the tinkle of a tanner and a sing-song. Round the old Joanna. And it ain't just talking on the strap. Anything for money is there on tap. Them too artificial, they're about like a boar. Now it's cock and bull, and it's lardy door. Mind you, spittoons and sawdust, them perhaps best gone. But still it's sad, as there's hardly one. We are firing the grade to welcome you in. You'll get a tail with your ale. I care how you've been. It's the company what counts, I suppose. But when you see the old pups close, it seems to me to be a shame, because these new ones... They'll never be the same. Now, when you think, ladies and gentlemen, about the difference with the old pubs and the new, and when you go in the pub, how about the blokes as goes darting, he goes dominoes, fishing, rugby players, cricketers, golfers, and they leave the poor ladies at home. Oh, I hate a shame. Just think a bit, we out of doubt. There's plenty of sport in widows about. Now, I don't say some have lost the spouse, but some blokes are, kid, I'm never in there. She'll take the dart in widows. Them everywhere while he's off darting. 
And on the beard, it's two to one as he's in trouble. If he ain't throw the winning double. Fishing with us. You know, eating scoff. They're blokes, they've simply floated off. Never mind what he wants to say. Grubs for dinner, maggots for tea. <laughs> He's off for slight light and out all day. After the one what got away. Pigeon widows, got no chance. He's thinking of that bird from France. And if a spikes when a race is on, it's on with his coat and away he's gone. It's just the same with dominoes. You ask the wives, it's them who knows. Rugby widows have stuck at home. While he's got his head stuck in a crumb. And cricket widows are in clover. While he's off bowling them over. And football widows, they call win. He never knows where he's been. And golfing widows do the nut. While all he does is put, put, put. If a bloke plays dominoes, goes fishing and darts, brides a widow of our starts. Night after night, he wants to play. But he's tired at home. It's all his away. We hear his sport is number one. He's in and out as a sporting man. The answer, girls, is be the same. And join him in his little game. Thank you very much. And having lots of bad doctors and hospitals and places, but we would be without them. Hospitals and places, it could be denied. Was all on we hope was we can avoid. But that's the question, and you answer me. We had such places, where would we be? Them angels of mercy, I am the nurses, who coping with all sorts, hospital cases. They come in from everywhere, all parts of the globe, to deal with some with the patients of Job and the doctors. And the surgeons who do the operations, like the nurses, they come in from nearly all nations. We depend on them all, and just though it seem the way they work, they're great as a team. So if you have to go in hospital bed, don't tell the others as you're half Jed. It's often the case, though you know, them next to you are worse than you. And don't be one to shout the nurse. So they all hear around the place. You'll help yourself to get back warm. By being a patient, patient chum. So, our kid, I hope you see what I mean. If you've got your health, you're a king or a queen. Because that's your riches. That's your finest treasure. You call your health with money measure. Because your health's like everything, never you fear. You don't know you've got it till it ain't there. And then it makes you appreciate the doctors and the nurses. Do it, mate. I think we appreciate everything. The more that you go on in life, ladies and gentlemen, the more that you tend to look back in retrospect and think about the the days. You know, I was all up. Actually, I played cricket out this way before the war, and since the war at, at Little at uh, Little Shell and Newport and around this area, I used to come to St George's, and I met a lot of friends through cricket and this. And you must have heard about the cricketer who married his first slip. <laughs> Very true, you know. Actually, I knew a bloke this way. He was caught in 30 here, and he got his missus one night there, just down the, the star pub down the road here, by that opening. And he says, Dio, I think it's about time we got married, Mary Anna. I says, who's going to wait till? <laughs> oh. Mind you, he got no chance of getting in the Guinness Book of Records. I'd got a mate. He was caught in 41 here, and then retired undefeated. <laughs> I come coating this way, follow the war, 1933. Wench named Rachel. Down towards Tongue here. I used to call her Rachel because her runs was all over the place, you know. <laughs> I went to see the fair the one day. I said, I'd like to marry you, Rachel. I says, how ha, ha, he says. I says, ha, I would. I thought I can speak as posh as you. <laughs> he says, how much a week do you earn? Well, I says, 35 and a tanner. I thought that'll shake him. He says, 35 and a tanner, he says. That wouldn't keep my daughter in handkerchiefs. I said, well, I don't want to marry this nutty nose bugger then. <laughs> Just to conclude this half, ladies and gentlemen, I've had a few letters through the post and a couple of phone calls through press offices to, uh, to do one that I recorded for BBC Two 
last year. And if I can very quickly explain where I come to write that one, funnily enough, in recent weeks it's been a bit, uh, sort of, uh, history repeated itself with the power cuts. It's, I called it Reflections in Candlelight, and it's in the, in the brochure that you'll be able to, to get at half time if you're interested. And it's as well to know where people get inspired to write various stuff, and it was at the Institute for the Blind at Sedgley about nine years ago. Strangely enough, I've done a concert just this afternoon for members of Tipton and Wheel who've done a concert for the, the local blind, and a lot of the people who were in the room at Sedgley were there this afternoon at this church. At that time, ladies and gentlemen, everyone was reduced to candles, I'm sure you well recall it, and everybody was moaning because they couldn't switch the television on because you couldn't use your electric washers, irons and so forth, you know, we were all a little bit on edge. And when I went to this place, a 400, 500 audience, everybody, like everybody else, of course, was in the light of candles. But a little bit different to us mortal people who've got everything. These, a lot of these blind people had never even seen the light of a candle. And if there's anybody in this room tonight as ever thinks you might done to, under stress and strain, and we all do, just get a candle and light it in the dark. And if you can see it, go down on your knees and yell, thank God. Because a simple candle in a room can show you up. Life a all gloom. Even when we're in a plight still out of darkness comes the light. Which causes reflections, perhaps more clear. We don't miss nothing till it either. We've been living in enlightened days. We're money grabbing. It set folks ablaze. And the daily cry for bigger wages... It's plunged me back to darker ages, plain as a pike staff, in black and white. It's time we all see that light. Let's consider a bit without the jokes. Think of the blind, the afflicted folks, the people in bed, and the people in pain, and the old folks whose path I hardly again are. Oh, it's time we all went to school to learn about the golden rule. Could the doctors really strike we all in aces? in the midst of coping with hospital cases? Could housewives and pensioners all join a strike just because they ain't got what they'd like? No. It's the putting in, not the taking out, what lightens life's load, we out of doubt. I think we should all have misgiving when we count the cost of living. So in our darkest hours, let's smile and bear it, because a load, it's spread if you'll only share it. And you'll really get your values right if you'll just reflect in candlelight. Have you ever stopped and thought a while? You've got untold wealth just to see a smile. The blessings what you've got if you can only see. You'll never ever buy them off the MEB. And the gifts what you've got to see that light. They'll see you through the darkest night. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.